13-year-old boy Paris Bennett raped, then killed his four-year-old sister. Today's true crime case is a difficult case to talk about, and I approach this topic with a heavy heart. Paris Bennett was born on October 10th, 1993. His father wasn't around for long. He left Charity Lee to raise her son on her own. Paris grew up to become a bright young man with an excellent IQ of 141. Paris Bennett was very smart. When Paris was eight years old, his mother Charity became pregnant again with a baby girl she would name Ella. Bennett was not excited by the idea of having another sibling. He was rather angry and upset by the news. Whenever there was any sort of talk discussing the new baby on the way, Bennett would get up and leave the room in a huff. But whether Bennett liked it or not, baby Ella arrived on April 12th, 2002. And much to Charity's surprise, Bennett's attitude changed towards his sister almost instantly. He was no longer angry and upset. He was actually happy and seemed to really love his baby sister. In return, Ella also loved her big brother. They got along really well and loved to play with each other. That is until Bennett was about age 11 or 12. Their mother Charity was working long hours as a waitress and had slipped back into some of her old ways of using drugs and abusing alcohol. She had been sober for the last 12 years, but had a bit of a slip up. Bennett did not like to see his mother this way. He resented her, her drug use. He lost all of his trust in his mother and over time his anger really started to build up towards his mother. It took six whole months, but Charity was able to get back off of the drugs and get herself clean for her children. The family started to physically move around a lot. Bouncing from house to house disrupted the flow of their lives. They eventually settled in with Charity's mother, Kyla. The environment at Kyla's house was rather toxic and not a great place to raise a family, but they tried to make the best of the situation. Bennett was having none of it though. He began to act out and make things more difficult for the family. One day out of the blue, while Bennett and Ella were playing together, Bennett broke one of Ella's toys and the incident resulted in Charity scolding and punishing Bennett. Bennett became furious. He went into the kitchen and grabbed a knife from one of the drawers and started waving it around. And then he ran out of the house with the knife still in his hand. His mother and grandmother quickly chased after him. Bennett then stopped running from them, turned around and started waving the knife towards his mother and grandmother. His mother Charity and grandmother Kyla were scared by his actions, but were able to pin him to the ground and retrieve the knife from his hand. This wasn't the only act of violence that Bennett had displayed. His mother Charity once wrote in April of 2007, he slammed the table into me. Pinning me against the concrete wall behind me, he cut off my air. I was in shock, paralyzed. I thought I was going to die there. And then he pulled the table back. I caught my breath and then he slammed it into me again. Clearly Bennett was a very disturbed young man and his anger seemed to be escalating over time. In February of 2007, Paris Bennett was 13 years old. To the outside world, he was just another teenager, but inside the family home, things were anything but normal. And Bennett was about to reach his breaking point. On February 5th, 2007, the kid's mother, Charity, was out working her usual waitress job at Buffalo Wild Wings. The kids were left at home with a babysitter. It was just another ordinary night, or so it had seemed. After a while, Bennett had persuaded the babysitter to leave the residence earlier than scheduled and before his mother had even gotten home from work. The babysitter eventually complied and left the two kids home alone around 10 p.m. that evening. And that's when Bennett began his heinous attack. Bennett entered into her bedroom with a knife. He sexually abused her and then began to repeatedly stab his sister over and over again. He injured her for a total of 17 times before he stopped. After his attack on his little sister, he called a friend from school and casually talked to him for several minutes. Then the two hung up. After the call with his schoolmate, Bennett phoned the police and admitted to the crime he had just committed. He had told the police officer on the phone, quote, I unintentionally killed someone. The officer reacted, you think you killed someone? Bennett said, no, I know I did. My sister. I feel so messed up. But why would Bennett do this to his poor defenseless little sister? His little sister had never done anything to make him angry or even upset. She was only four years old and was a total sweetheart. At first, when Bennett was brought in for questioning, he claimed that he had a hallucination that made his sister look like a pumpkin headed demon on fire. But later Bennett came clean that the reasoning behind his actions was something much more sinister. He had admitted that he had ended his sister's life to get back at his mother and that he wanted to punish his mother and make her suffer. He admitted he had planned out the murder of his sister Ella and considered murdering his mom too. Bennett's mother commented, he said the first reason he didn't go ahead with it was because it was a lot harder to kill someone than he thought. The second reason was the realization that if he killed me, I would only have suffered for five, 10, 15 minutes, but if he left me alive without Ella, 
I would suffer for the rest of my life. So instead of ending his own mother's life, Bennett ended the life of his baby sister, who he loved. It was later discovered that Bennett, at the age of just 13, had been searching and watching hours upon hours of violent and harmful pornographic materials for months. His internet search history revealed that he had been searching keywords such as S&M and, and bondage and sadism. It turns out that Bennett had even been watching these sort of snuff films in the hours leading up to the death of his sister. Bennett admitted that this overconsumption of harmful materials led him to sexually assault his sister on the night that the babysitter had left the home earlier than planned. After he rang the police that night, he was promptly arrested and then brought in for questioning, where he eventually told the authorities the whole truth about what really went down that night. He even went into detail telling the police his stabs were slow and methodical, not frenzied, not an uncontrollable rage, not all were deep, most were shallow jabs and punctures. He told the detectives he stabbed her and pulled the knife out slowly that it felt like stabbing a mattress or a marshmallow. It's hard to believe that anyone, especially someone so young, could be capable of such horrible things. Bennett was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Well, behind bars, Bennett continues to try and hurt his mother, Charity. He has told her foul things such as, I enjoy watching your pain, when she went to visit him in the prison. It seems that Bennett has no remorse for his actions. In 2017, Paris Bennett spoke out saying, I decided to do my crime and I take the entire liability for my deeds. I'm not crazy and I don't experience the ill effects of any psychological instability. Bennett was interviewed by the talk show host Piers Morgan, where he reflected on his past and what had led him to harm his sister. He said for a long time, there was only this hot flaring bundle of fierceness in the pit of my stomach and it was aimed at my mom. Also, one reason why I decided to kill my sister and not another person is that I realized that by doing that, I could hurt my mom in the absolute worst manner since I had consistently known as a youngster that the most decimating thing to my mom would be the deficiency of one of her kids. I figured out how to remove both of her kids in a single singular motion. He further added, yes, I carried out colossal wrongdoing. However, does that one misstep characterize as long as I can remember? I don't figure it does. Charity later wrote and released a book about the whole ordeal in her memoir titled, How Now Butterfly, a memoir of murder, survival, and transformation. In the book, she goes into incredible details of before, during, and after the crime. She made comments on her son such as, my son is a psychopath, I can't help him. That may not matter in the long run. What may matter is I can't, not at this point, give up on him either. She writes, I love my firstborn with as much intensity as I have since the day I found out I was pregnant with him. Charity's deep introspection in this book helped her to grieve the loss of her guardian angel, who she affectionately calls Ella Bella. Ever since the horrible incident, Charity associates her Ella with butterflies, since it was the last painting she made in school. This is the reasoning behind the title of her book, How Now Butterfly. Charity's memoir ends in the year 2011, the same year that she founded the nonprofit Ella Foundation. Ella stands for Empathy, Love, Lessons, and Action, which helps people affected by violence, mental illness, and the criminal justice system. Meanwhile, Paris Bennett today is still carrying out his 40-year sentence at the Ferguson Unit Texas State Prison. He will qualify for parole in 2027. I personally think he should spend his life behind bars. I mean, his hate for his mother outweighed the love he had for his sister. This is dark. He is cold, calculating, and I don't think that his mother Charity will be safe if he gets released from prison. I don't think anyone is safe if he gets released from prison. What do you guys at home think about this case? Are there any true crime cases that you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Mac, and thank you so much for watching Killer Bites. Stay safe out there.